For more than four decades, Voyager 2 has been gliding quietly through the immensity of uncharted space beyond the outer reaches of our solar system, a solitary ambassador bearing Earth's aspirations, dreams, and remembrances out into the boundless expanse of interstellar space. Released in 1977 as part of NASA's groundbreaking Voyager mission, Voyager 2 has traveled over 12 billion miles, a distant second only to its twin, Voyager 1, from home. Its mission, intended to be a few years long, has exceeded all expectations by far. In the process, it sent back breathtaking pictures and vital information from the outer planets, including unprecedented views of Uranus and Neptune. But now, in what could be its ultimate act, the spacecraft has sent back a signal so bizarre, so unexplainable, that it has left scientists stunned with questions. The signal came out of the blue, a brief, sharp burst of information that broke Voyager 2's typical slow drip of telemetry. NASA's Deep Space Network, which has been monitoring the old spacecraft's weak signals for decades, picked up the glitch during regular surveillance. At first, it looked like mere static, maybe caused by cosmic rays or a malfunction. But within the static was a series of data packets that looked strangely formatted. Twisted, yes, but also intentional. It wasn't merely a bad battery or malfunctioning subsystem. It was something else. Something that felt almost too intentional. Initially, engineers suspected a glitch. After all, Voyager 2 had been built using 1970s vintage computer hardware and memory that would be laughably undersized in today's terms. Its processors operated less than a millionth the rate of today's smartphones. It is powered by a radioisotope thermoelectric generator that has been gradually weakening for decades. But when the Voyager team progressed deeper into the structure of the signal, skepticism became awe. The burst of information bore none of Voyager's normal operating patterns. Rather, it evidenced mathematical regularity. Strings of bits created recognizable strings of prime numbers. Signal amplitude changes conformed to the Fibonacci pattern. Data clusters occurred concurrently with externally detected spikes in cosmic rays with virtual millisecond accuracy. These were not the markers of random noise. These were the fingerprints of structure. Of design. This phenomenon is even more inexplicable considering Voyager 2's location today, just outside the heliopause, the outer edge of our solar system. It's a place where the solar wind collides with the interstellar medium, creating a chaotic buffer zone of charged particles and mystery magnetic interactions. Scientists have always wondered if the heliopause could be more dynamic than we knew. Now, thanks to this mysterious transmission, those hypotheses are gaining a new sense of urgency. What if Voyager 2 has run into something? Not merely a change in conditions in the cosmos, but an event? Or maybe even... A presence? Soon after the strange transmission was picked up, Voyager 2 went completely silent. No additional telemetry. No status reports. No carrier wave. Nothing. To a spacecraft that had weathered solar storms, hardware deterioration, and the solitary vastness of interstellar space, this sudden silence was meaningful. It wasn't the expected slow fade out of a dying device. It was a sudden shutdown, as if Voyager 2 had crossed a boundary past which it could no longer talk or refuse to. To grasp the magnitude of what might have happened, it's essential to consider the spacecraft's endurance. Voyager 2 has been operating in conditions colder than minus 450 degrees Fahrenheit, where cosmic radiation bombards its fragile electronics and power is measured in dwindling milliwatts. And yet it continued to function, sending home data about magnetic fields, charged particle densities, and plasma waves, all from the very edge of our star's domain. Researchers had anticipated that, with strict energy conservation, Voyager 2 could keep transmitting at least until 2026. Nobody expected a cold, enigmatic departure. The environment of the transmission only adds to the intrigue. The signal occurred during a time of high solar activity. A potent coronal mass ejection had recently burst from the sun, propelling shockwaves toward the solar system's boundary. Others think that this solar energy could have caused an unexpected response in Voyager 2's outdated electronics. But if so, why did the last message from the spacecraft seem so coherent? 
Cosmic interference is random. It doesn't build mathematical patterns or follow golden ratio harmonics. It doesn't replicate intention. That has brought theories more and more speculative. One hypothesis is that Voyager 2 passed through some zone of abnormal space, possibly a thick pocket of interstellar plasma or an energetic whirlpool that overtaxed its systems. Such an event could have triggered a sort of system-wide improvisation, a computational hiccup that, for an instant, created patterns outside of its programming. Voyager 2 is not equipped with AI, but its systems are capable of responding adaptively to change. Could a drastic external stimulus have initiated a cascading chain of feedback loops, essentially generating a self-organized, chaotic signal with emergent properties? But there are others who propose something even more bizarre. What if this wasn't a coincidence? What if Voyager 2's last transmission wasn't caused by internal failure or natural interference, but contact? Contact with something. Not the science fiction kind of direct speech or alien tongues, but a collision of two quite disparate systems, one human, one not. Maybe what was sent wasn't a message as such, but some sort of digital signature. A reflection. A mark. Such conjecture would usually be explained away. But even the more conservative members of the scientific community have had to accept that the transmission defies any recognized category. It is not compatible with hardware failure. It is not a recognized software glitch. It is not a standard cosmic interference pattern. And yet it exists, recorded and played back hundreds of times, impossible to replicate or fully explain. Something occurred. This has left us questioning what lies beyond the heliopause. We don't have direct measurements beyond where Voyager 2 currently ventures. It is, quite literally, an unexplored territory. We don't know how interstellar space behaves on a fine scale. We don't know if there are structures, magnetic or energetic, that work on principles we're not yet aware of. We don't know if we're actually alone. What if Voyager 2 ran into something that's always been there, just out of reach? What if its last act was to see it? This is a possibility that has given rise to a multidisciplinary reaction. Physicists, cryptographers, and signal analysts are all considering the data. Military satellites have been stealthily sweeping deep space frequencies for reverberations of similar signals. The SETI Institute has included the Voyager signal in its repository of anomalous transmissions, and artificial intelligence-based modeling systems are being taught to seek out patterns in other deep space data previously rejected as noise. There is a feeling that something has changed, not in what we know, but in how we approach what's possible. Emotionally, Voyager 2's possible last words have struck humanity in a way that unadulterated data can only do so very seldom. To so many, this mission represents the finest aspects of us. It contains a golden record, a time capsule of our planet, with multiple language greetings, music, images, and sounds intended to depict the richness and diversity of life on our planet. It was intended as a present for whoever might someday discover it. And decades later, it seems that present may have been delivered. At NASA's control centers, the atmosphere is grave but purposeful. Scientists still ping Voyager 2 in an effort to make contact again. Every few hours, commands are transmitted. Every few hours, silence is restored. Meanwhile, the final signal is being scrutinized to a degree never before seen. Supercomputers are chomping down on terabytes of space noise to screen out the signature. Units are decompiling the data into raw binaries, cross-referencing it against quantum event probability. But no one has yet deciphered its code, if indeed it is a code. That has raised a pressing question, if we do ultimately receive another such signal, will we be prepared? Voyager 2 was not designed as a message receiver. It was designed to explore, to look, and to report. But if it temporarily became the first interstellar communications conduit, then we have to re-examine everything. What guidelines should we follow in next steps? Who determines how we respond? And what do we send if we decide to reply? The future is now tinged with lingering mystery. Voyager 2, which so once offered us our first close-up glimpses of Uranus and Neptune, might have presented one final present, not an image, not a measurement, but a question. 
a signal that defies our expectations about reality and dares us to speculate that the universe could be more alive than we imagine. That it is perhaps not silent. That it speaks in ways we do not yet know. Until Voyager 2 says something more, or until we construct the next generation of spacecraft capable of tracing its waning trail, we are left with only that last whisper. A flash of ordered static from the rim of all things. It could be the sound of a malfunction. It could be the last cry of a dying machine. Or it could be the first hello of something in the dark. Whatever it is, one thing is certain, the universe just grew a little more mysterious. And humanity, courtesy of a battered, old spacecraft still drifting through the stars, has a new reason to pay closer attention.